Hey, wait a minute. These ones are two buildings, not one. Alright, this print was made by Bold Machines and is available for download in the description. It is a total of 23 pieces that should be one color, and while the exact print time has been lost to history, it was about six days of printing. Now before I get started with the whole building of this castle, I want to say that this was actually a school project for me way back in the day when the time lapse for this came out. And it was for actually European history, which is why it's a castle. Because I took AP Euro, um, or advanced placement. I don't think AP is really an international thing. But the tests for AP end about a, or they happen about a month before school gets out. So AP classes have pretty much a month where they're done with the curriculum. So the assignment was to just teach the class something. And so this had enough pieces for at least one piece for everyone in the class. And so what I did is print everything but um, I think it was this piece right here uh, at home. And then I brought the printer in class because I know the tech teacher, we locked it in the room where the school's TV show is filmed. And so people could see it being printed throughout the day. It was five hours, so it was about the length of a day. And that's why one of the time-lapse things is different. It was filmed at the school. And then the next day, I got special permission to do two days because 3D printing is so long. Everybody put together the castle like one piece at a time. That means, of course, I had to memorize the design. But honestly, the amount of times I have to put this together and take it apart digitally, if I haven't memorized a design by the time I have the pieces, Either something's gone wrong, or it's a Fallout 4 design, because those things are complicated. I'd also like to say, I know this is going to be a bit difficult for you to see, white prints with my film lights, all these are, but really it's kind of a rough to get you an idea on how to build this. So the base is made out of the four large pieces in one uh, kind of smaller piece where the road is, and because of you know, I don't use glue for this because of the multicolors, and I'll go a bit more on why it's multicolor after this is built. Uh, you kind of need to prop this back one that's yellow up against something. So this is the base, the five big pieces, and then the row right there. You then have the two curved gate pieces go next, with, of course, the gate, the one with the actual gate going to the front. I told you, this is... That was the chess piece. Um, yeah, I've actually lost several of the chess pieces um, since I got that set. Okay, I've propped it up with some pliers. Again, I don't want to use glue because some of the pieces aren't white and one day I probably will replace them. Next, you've got this big back piece, which is actually two pieces I printed together so they're connected. And if you're not doing this for a school project, so I didn't, you don't need a specific number of pieces, I recommend doing this for as many pieces as you can, just because you don't get the seam lines that this print is gonna have a fair amount of. But yes, this back piece goes right here in the back of the castle. Next, you need these two uh, rather large castle pieces. You can also print these as one piece, and I think you can print it even, that's not it with some of the pieces that go on top, just to get rid of the seam lines. But these go together like this, and just sit in the castle, lined up against the back piece. Next up, I'd recommend doing these ones that have the two towers on either side. They go together with the bit with the little um, crenellations going in the back of the castle like this, so that everything lines up. Now you're gonna have seam lines at this point, and I would recommend, depending on how you display this, having, like I display it looking at it from this angle. So I try to line up the seams fr from here, just for the front side, and kind of this side. That's a good 3D printing trick. Most of my prints, well some of them, look kind of bad if you look at them from the back. Especially, um, where did I put them? The spiritual stones. I don't know where I put them, but the green one has some horrible gashes on the back. So I display the other side. Next, you're gonna want these pieces that kind of form the triangle open bit when they're put together. And those just go right on the front and they connect to the um, pieces here that have a triangle window. 
A lot of this will make sense if you actually print the design. Next up, you've got this guy with the two little roof things. It's basically one of the tops, and that lines up right here so that the roofs line up with the big towers you've created. You've got um, some two really small towers. They go on here and on here. I can't remember if you can print that all as one piece because I did this so long ago. But you've also got these thicker towers that go on the bigger empty spots. And you'll see there are some really thin lines at the bottom that line up to this back piece. That's a good thing to know. Next up, you've got this little weird tri-castle bit that you're probably gonna want to print this at one piece, but these two little roofs just slide into slots on here. And again, these were pieces I would have printed as one, but I needed to have enough pieces for everybody in the class for the school project. And that goes up on the front. Followed by lastly, this piece, the top did kind of snap off, but that goes on here. And I've just done in uh, eight and a half minutes what will probably take most same people with glue a day or two to complete. Now, because this is a school project, uh, as long as, because I know I have a lot of students and teachers that watch this, uh, as well as showing people how a 3D printer works, it was also good to use some of the failed pieces because you're bound to have some with this many. Um, not only what the inside of 3D prints look like with that little diamond infill pattern that I use. Um, yeah, this would have been 5% diamond infill, but also kind of what failed 3D prints look like. And then I also showed them the time lapse that I made and that's what put, I put on YouTube way back. I also brought in a few of my strange prints like the companion cube because it was so many pieces. The Stormtrooper helmet was the only one I had painted at the time. I think I brought the Demon Blood Sword in, but a whole bunch of interesting prints to show the class. And yes, I did carry my big printer. I had like me and two other people at school help carry everything up, um, up to the TV room on the second floor. I'm gonna have to do kind of the weird handheld shaky cam um, to actually review this print, but I mean, it was precarious enough to get the camera to sit there for the building. Also, I'm not doing this on the green screen because this is just so big. As you can see, um, it lines up. It's actually taller than my modulars. And I think this guy here, Palace Cinema, is like the second tallest modular building in the series. So yeah, this is really big. Here's a nice comparison. Most people have a minifigure somewhere in their house. And uh, this is the cast. Ooh, I shouldn't do that. This is a YouTube video. Yeah, that's the castle. This just looks like a sideways castle to you, but that's what the castle looks like. So yeah, minifigure is about the size of the little catwalks, which, as you can see by the tiny windows, that's the scale we're dealing with here. I'll try and give you guys a nice little panoramic of this. So you've got the mountains. You can imagine, I saw these pieces. I'm like, how am I going to print that? Uh, as I walk in front of the light, you've got a whole bunch of brilliant detail. Uh, what with these roofs, those are very hard to clean out of support materials. But you've got all these little tiny, tiny details on the castle in my slicer software, the MakerBot desktop. Uh, it doesn't really know how to deal with that on the inside. So the inside of these prints look a bit weird. Despite being, you know, like really light, I don't know, you can kind of get a sense with how easily I can move these because they are 95% hollow. But all these windows do actually kind of go in somewhere. Uh, these ones are the best, but you can see these windows, they kind of make little indents, so they are proper windows. Just It's a beautiful model. I've got this sitting next to my bed by, um, well, I've got it sitting over there by my little Stormtrooper helmet and right next to the at, -AT and my Super Star Destroyer. But yeah, I mean, here you've got a little Lego car, you've got Palace Cinema, you've got the giant castle. I love this underside here as well, where it's literally just hollow because the floor is on this piece and not this piece. Now, some problems I have with this print, I don't know what's going on with this road. Like normally it does fit perfectly, but for whatever reason, it's a bit off today. 
and some of the trees, you know, have kind of snapped a bit, what with the support material, because most of these had to be printed upside down. But there are little, you know, gaps and stuff, like right there, which is strange. Even in my slicer software, what I do is I put the whole print together um, in the MakerBot desktop just to make sure I have all the pieces. And even in there, there were some bits that didn't quite line up, which is strange because this was would have been designed as one piece and then it would have been cut up to for printers. And it's not glued, which would help some of the stability things. And it is pretty light all in all as a print. But you know, with five bases, it is very, like you can't carry it. You have to carry it piece by piece. But the reason I haven't glued it is and because I have the pink and yellow, is the school project. It was super nerve-wracking, because I had however many hours this print took, I had like um, 48 more hours to get the, like, until the project was due, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you have to work your sleep schedule around these prints, go to school, and prints fail, that's like two fit failed prints for these little big pieces and I wouldn't have got the project done and it was some sort of national holiday so I couldn't order more white film and to reprint all of this I don't want to paint it because of all the intricate details I would clog up the windows but to reprint all of the pink white and that yellow white is my most valuable film like in the time I've done n squared I have used six, well here, they're down here. Those six rolls are the film that I've used, and three of them are white. Yeah, this one's white, this one's white, and that one's white. Like, <laughs> and on top of those three, I've got my white film there that came with the printer, and, and my white film there. Like. White is the most valuable film because the most things use it. Of course, here is, that's interesting to see, my whole film collection. White is by far the most used color. It's super interesting. I've done like 30 some prints and the only film rolls I've run out of are those six. Everything else is mostly full or hardly used. But yes, this is a very nice print. I would recommend it to you know, anyone who likes this just sitting in their room, especially in the white. It makes everything, I think the white prints are some of the most beautiful because it makes everything look like that, um, you know, marble statuary look, very fancy. And this guy put so much effort into the design. It's just amazing, like all the detail. Um, oh yeah, look, I hit the table and there's a massive crack in there. I do recommend gluing it and not trying to get up at like 3 in the morning on a school night to switch out the film. But this was a very, very nice print. I'll say as well, still having some printer issues. Well, by printer issues, I mean, you know, that's the printer. But, um, the, that's why there was no video yesterday. Not yesterday, over Thanksgiving weekend. I couldn't print anything and I was a bit busy. But this is one of the prints I've had lying around just for this sort of occasion. I suppose I could do some Lego review -y stuff, like with this stuff, um, my modular buildings, my Excalibur, my, what's it called? I say Excalibur, that guy over there. He's called like Executioner or something. But yeah, if there's enough interest, tell me in the comments. I might next week do a video on these because I have two lightsabers left, which I think one of them is missing a piece and the other is super hard to put together. So until I can get a new printer, you know, <laughs> Legos? But yeah, that's just a thought. Anyway, all right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and sharing it. Subscribe so you can catch all the amazing robotics, electronics, and 3D printing projects I have planned. Thanks for watching.